Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. It's been a little while, thank you for your patience. Where have I been? What have I been doing? Why have I not been uploading YouTube videos? I'll answer that bit first, but before I do, just a little preview of what's to come. The last month I have been traveling a fair bit. I have picked up a few little bits and pieces that I wanted to share with you. Last weekend I was in Melbourne for an additional day. I'd been there for a work conference. So I was able to pick up a few little bits and pieces. I have a wish list item that I have picked up and I also have an unexpected fine jewelry item from my favorite jeweler, Canturi. So um, stick around if you want to see that one. Um, where have I been? I've just been really busy. And I think like a few of my peers here on YouTube, sometimes our professional lives and our personal lives need our time. Now, I have been running pretty much full steam since I came back from my European holiday. Did I mention I went to Europe? Uh, at the end of September and I didn't take time off over Christmas. I had some time off planned in late January and then I got really sick. With that sickness, I guess it just hit my immunity a little bit and then I kept feeling pretty lethargic after that to the extent that I caught yet another cold. Meanwhile, things are full steam ahead at work and whilst I'm really enjoying it, it is taking most of my energy. So much so that with the sickness, I haven't been able to exercise and weirdly expending energy helps you feel more energetic. And so all the things that are important in terms of energy levels and good sleep, I just haven't been doing. And I thought how ridiculous to keep pushing myself to create YouTube videos, which is supposed to be my joy time, my creative time, my fun time, and making it like a job, like, you know, a labor of love people talk about a lot, but I wasn't getting any joy out of forcing myself to spend my couple of recovery days on the weekend with household chores and YouTube videos. So I just thought, no. Nope. I'm, I'm just not going to do it and as much as I would have loved to have vlogged and shared my time with you in Melbourne, I just didn't want to do it. Um, so I hope you'll forgive me for that and that you will, you know, enjoy some of the bits and pieces I've got to share with you today. The first thing that I'll share with you is just a few cosmetics pieces that I've picked up finally. Um, one thing I wanted to recommend. I am not a beauty influencer by any means, but when I find a product I love, I want to share it with you. In my um, Mecca Beauty Loop box, and Mecca is an Australian version of Sephora, I suppose, and you get um, member loyalty points for tiered memberships. In my loyalty box, um, I received a sample size of this Stiller One Step, One Step Correct. Now, it's a multicolored primer, and I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. Anyway, I went through the sample size really, really quickly and I had to buy another one. It has like a vacuum pump, so you can see that it's empty on the bottom there. And it's fantastic. Um, I just find, I put it on after my sunscreen and I don't know, it feels like it just puts a filter on your face and prepares your face to receive the other bits and pieces that you're going to put on it some of which I'm going to show you now. So when I was in Melbourne, I went to the David Jones and I was with my good friend Eileen who had been telling me about some of the Tom Ford products that she had bought recently. Our David Jones hardly has any stock. Our Mecca hardly has any stock. But I go to Melbourne, fully stocked, I can get everything I want. So the product that she was talking about was first of all the lip color that I'm wearing now, which is Casablanca. So I'll show you that one. I love the Tom jo Tom Jones, <laughs> Tom Ford packaging. I did do like an unboxing when I was in my hotel room in Melbourne. The I need to buy a new phone. My the sound quality and the picture quality, which Connor keeps telling me about, is terrible. Um, and so instead of uploading a dodgy video, I just left it. So this is Casablanca. I am wearing it now. So I'll come in for my close up. It's just a really nice neutral kind of tone. 
I'm going to do swatches. Actually, I'll take my watch off. I'm going to do swatches of these because when I filmed the original video, I actually had all of this makeup on, but I didn't even think to do that today because I wasn't sure I was going to film. So here is Casablanca. And yeah, it looks dark, but on me, you can see it just looks like, you know, a nice spicy neutral lip. Now, the other color that I normally wear is Indian Rose, also by Tom Ford. And I just wanted to get that one out and put it next to Casablanca. So Casablanca's on the top, Indian Rose is on the bottom, just so you can see the slight variation. One is more slightly, I guess, a warmer color and one's slightly cooler. So the Casablanca, I think, is a cooler color, but both of them really wearable for me and I'm sure for a lot of complexions. The other piece that I was able to pick up, which again came highly recommended and I've been really enjoying wearing it, is the gloss in number 8 Inhibition. And again, the packaging on these is just gorgeous. And what my friend Eileen does is she puts a little bit over the top of her lippy just to give it a nice, you know, shiny, glossy luxe finish um and i have to say another fabulous recommendation so that one i have been using and really enjoying now i've only used the eyeshadow palette that i purchased once so this eyeshadow palette again from tom ford is called honeycomb now i'm going to cover that mirror so it doesn't blind you so you can see the shades these seem to be more kind of metallic, but when they go on, they are quite creamy, kind of matte, but dewy. Creamy, matte, dewy. Yeah, I think that's a good description. So um, they, they do have great pigmentation. I'm going to swatch all four of them on my arm so that you can see. And again, the thing I love about Tom Ford quads is that I can wear all of the colors in like multiple combinations of looks. They're very buildable and it's the one palette I can take on holiday or anywhere with me and I know I'm going to get lots of looks out of it. So they're the four colors just under the lip glosses there. So really beautiful and buildable and obviously this kind of pink color works perfectly against green eyes so I can really build that up and make some more dramatic eye looks as well. Now my go-to eyeshadow palette is also Tom Ford. I have two of these and this one is quite worn but I'll show them to you side by side so that you can see the similarities and differences. My go-to is Insolent Rose and you can see it's been kind of used. Um, so one is more like fresh pinks, has a sparkle and one is more kind of moody. I think they're both very different but complementary and I'm really excited to um, start playing around with my honeycomb palette a bit more. This week was all about efficiency at work so I just kept to my daily makeup look but I will start playing with that honeycomb a little bit more. Uh, and finally, a recommendation from another YouTuber here, Lisa from Luxury and Life in the Middle, was talking about the Givenchy Prism Liebe Finishing Powder. Now, I went to um, Sephora to get this one. I found it really hard to get like the right color match because I've got quite a dark complexion and Lisa was using one that was in pinks and purples and to be honest that's what appealed to me um, but my color for medium complexion oh god it's made a bit of a mess is like a purpley green a neutral and like a pinky color anyway you just mix them together and she swears by the finish that it gives her a crease free really lovely set makeup look. I have played with it. I don't, for me, so far, and I'm not, as I said, a big, I'm not a beauty influencer or a makeup aficionado. I don't, I personally haven't noticed the difference in using it compared to say my Laura Mercier translucent powder or my Hourglass, um, you know, setting powder. I can't remember what that one's called, Veil, Veil. But I'm gonna stick with it and see how I go. Next, we will get to my wish list item and then I'll show you the fine jewelry that I've purchased. So my wish list item comes in this box. I have been watching this item on several different online websites 
and I also attempted to purchase it in person when I was in Sydney but they didn't have any sizes left in Australia they said so I went back to the online websites and I chose my Teresa so thank you this package has been lovingly wrapped by Elliot I didn't choose to get all of the elaborate packaging I guess I once you've been shopping a little bit, you kind of get a little bit over it from the My Teresa's and the matches because what do you do with it once you get it, you know? I also love that all of your documentation comes in like a little folder and this one has a quote on it. The only real elegance is in the mind. If you've got that, the rest really comes from it and that's by Diana Vreeland. Any guesses what might be in here? A little bit of red peeking through. <laughs> if you didn't guess, do you even know me? Yes, I was able to pick up a wishlist item from Roger Vivia. <laughs> you know that I have a love affair with this brand and that I'm constantly looking at their pieces. Not all of the pieces are for me, I have to say, but a lot of them are. And they are investment pieces. I wear mine, I wear them like every day. And I have to say that I have put one pair in the bin um, because I got a quote to repair them and I'd left it probably a bit long and it was about $1,400, which was more than the price of the shoes originally. I've got three pairs here now. One is probably close to being binned. And what I've noticed is the patent, they last a lot longer with the hardware that I give them. And I'm talking, walking a few kilometers a day in them on cobbled streets in the city, up hills, driving in them. Like I'm not careful with them. They're just shoes to me. So I think the lesson I've learned is the patent are probably have much more longevity than what the soft leather ones do. But the soft leather ones are so divine on the foot. So they always come with a little extra heel stop and I've never had problems with needing the heels to be replaced. But I have added rubber um, topies to the the toes of my Vivias and these gorgeous luxurious dust bags which I keep to pack my shoes in when I travel here we go kindly ask you to try on any shoes on carpeted surfaces only is it any surprise I put these on my wish list. These are the Bell Vivier Trumpet Pumps in Patent Lilac. And I've been watching these hoping that they would go on sale. Satire actually had them for around 1100 or so, but they only went up to a size 38. In the patent shoes, I've decided to size up to a 39 and a half. I'm typically a 39, but the patent are a little... Um, let's say unforgiving at the beginning but once they learn the shape of your foot they are wonderful so I've got an upper half size because I live in a warm climate as well my feet tend to swell but let me get these out these are just the most divine creatures they are a neutral in my wardrobe they are a great replacement for the soft leather ones that I have that are probably a little more pinky than these these are much more lilac -y purple they like this heel height is I think seven centimeters and I just find them a go-to I can't see a day where there won't be a pair of Belle Vivia trumpet pumps in my wardrobe and for me it's really just about keeping an eye on seasonal styles I think I picked these ones up at my Teresa they were the cheapest that I could find online they were like 1175 they went up to 1250 there was some for 1370 on different sites so it does pay to have a little look around but as it started to get into the season and the sizes started to become very limited I started to panic and I did not want to have FOMO about these shoes. And so I am so glad that I have them. I won't put in mod shots. If you want to see what they look like on, please go and see my Instagram at dales underscore addiction. You will see me styling these in multiple colors in various ways, whether I wear them with jeans, whether I wear them corporate, with a dress, like I just find them. They're just, they're great with everything. And they're so unique with the square toe. Fun fact, if you didn't know, Roger Vivier was originally a shoe designer for Christian Dior. So, hmm, 
So I now have boots and sandals and pumps from Vivia. I've not yet bought their blingy sneakers, but you know, there's still time. Okay, the final piece that I picked up, unexpected, but a wonderful, wonderful experience. If you haven't heard of the Australian jewelry brand Canturi, founded by Stefano Canturi, he used to design for Cartier, then you probably haven't been watching my channel very often because I adore Canturi. In fact, all of my rings on this finger here are Canturi and these are a combination of Regina and Radiant styles. I have another um, Regina bracelet on my wish list which I have talked about in the past but the price keeps going up on that one and it's just like it's not a priority at the moment. I had my engagement ring reset by Canturi in the Stella design. Um, yeah, and I also have the original Cubism piece which in the early days of my channel I talked about the fact I had to get this cut off my actual finger because I went exercising and uh, <laughs> I didn't take my rings off and my fingers swelled up so there is the cubism as well so beautiful art deco solid jewelry pieces made here in Australia really unique really identifiable and yeah I love them. I love quite bold, unique jewellery and yeah, the art deco vibes are just my thing. You can also see the cubism design on the shopping bag. So my friend Eileen and I walked past Canturi and they had a beautiful emerald ring in the window. I'll pop a picture of it over here. Now that ring was so, so divine. It actually reminded me of the ring I got from Miss Blue, which is a sponsorship and I'm gonna pop it on my finger here for you. Um, Miss Blue I received a sponsorship for and I really loved their um, lab grown emerald and it looked very similar to this one. So obviously I'd love to get the real thing one day, as in a mined emerald, but this is a, a very close substitute. So. I've got the link for that ring in the description box below. So that took us into the store. We thought we need to go in and see that piece. And lo and behold, my sales associate that I used to work with here in Brisbane had moved to Melbourne and she was in the Melbourne boutique. So she's like, Dale, come in, sit down. And we tried on lots of things, lots and lots and lots of things. It was so much fun. It was so uh, enjoyable not to be rushed. Um, it was a lovely, way to spend an afternoon you can see some of the things that we tried on it, it just magical i had been thinking about this particular piece for quite some time and i asked by chance did they happen to have them in white gold because typically this is made and sold in rose gold and sure enough they did so after um playing around with lots of beautiful pieces and um, you might say priming the appetite for spending. I tried these on and I was very excited about taking them home. So just look at the details here. Again, you've got the cubism here and we open to reveal. <gasps> I've been wearing them all this time. I purchased the Canturi Odyssey Butterfly Earrings and you can see them here with my Maria Tash curation. Now I'm going to pop in a close-up that is not on my head so that you can see how beautifully made these earrings are. The story of these earrings is that they're inspired by the migration of the monarch butterfly in Canada, how strong it is and how far it travels and how beautiful it is. And they have this three-dimensional look about them, which is just gorgeous and playful. And I thought went really beautifully with my flower garland, Tash Rook. I've got a tiny little butterfly up here and a Trinity earring here. And then to have the larger butterfly as my new stud piece for the bottom part of my earring. Look, I don't even think Mr. Addiction has noticed. I told him I bought a pair of earrings and he's not asked me about them at all. But yeah, I'm just, um, I can reveal my ears now. I just think it's a beautiful, modern, curated piercing arrangement. And yeah, I, I, I'm so glad that I tried them on. 
I always feel like trying on earrings kind of commits you to the purchase because like they're in you <laughs> and so I was reluctant to try them but once I put them on uh, I was yeah absolutely in love so they're 18 karat white gold diamond studs with 0.22 carats of f colored diamonds um, in a pave style and they were three thousand six hundred dollars so to me with what I see in the bag market at the moment and where I want to put my money like these are an everyday wear um, fine jewelry playful artistic and beautiful you know I don't have to worry about damage and yeah I'm just uninspired by what's out there in bags at the moment I think they're all very boring they're very reflective of the current you know vibe and I guess uncertainty in the um, financial markets and yeah when the chips are down buy diamonds <laughs> That's what I say. On the horizon, there are some new pieces coming from Fendi that I'm excited to have a look at. I have an appointment at Louis Vuitton tomorrow to have a look at a special collection that's traveling through Brisbane. So I might vlog that one if I feel up to it. I've got a few reviews to do for you. I've got to review my Louis Vuitton rolling luggage. Um, also my Hermes Duo Calvi and my Gucci Sylvie purchase, my Mob Wife era bag that so many of you loved and wanted to see what fits and all that jazz. So yeah, I will get to those. But as I said, thanks so much for sticking with me. I appreciate your patience. Give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'd love to know what you think of my new purchases. Let me know down in the comments below. I will see you in my next video. Bye.